Welcome to the first webinar promoted by the Extension Project Internationalization at Home. Thank you very much for your interest in being part of this event. Uh, for those who still don't know me, I'm Professor Andrea Taij from the Federal University of Minas Gerais, UFMG. Uh, I coordinate the Extension Project Internationalization at Home together with Professor Gustavo Teixeira from UFMG, who was invited to make today's presentation. Professor Giovanni Fonseca, also from UFMG, and the students Luis Fernando Alves from Montes Claros State University, Roger Lafetta, Lara Miranda, and Ana Clara Zamboni from UFMG. We all comprise the, the organizing committee of this extension project. Uh, the main objective of this project is to deepen the discussion on topics related to academic internationalization and related topics entirely in English, as you know, through webinars open to the public of UFMG community and also to the public of the external community. Uh, within universities, opportunities to practice English are normally focused on reading and text text comprehension skills. So this project is an opportunity for those who also want to practice their listening and their speaking skills in English. OK, uh, today's presentation is entitled What do you need to know to learn English? And it will be held by Professor Gustavo Teixeira. Professor Teixeira teaches English for academic purposes and for specific purposes at UFMG Mons Claros campus and holds a PhD degree in linguistics from PUC Minas Gerais. After Professor Teixeira's presentation, uh, all participants are welcome to participate in the discussion with comments or questions. Uh, the signature list will be posted on the chat at the end of the webinar. OK, and I take this opportunity to thank all participants, regardless of your English level, for your interest in participating uh, in practicing your English skills. I hope that all of us spend a quality time here over the next couple of hours. Uh, without further ado, uh, Professor Teixeira, thank you very much in advance for accepting uh, the invitation to talk about, about this very important topic uh, when it comes to academic internationalization. Uh, you can make your presentation now. Thank you very much, André. Thank you very much, um, everybody that's here. Um, so today we're going to share some information that <clears throat> uh, I learned throughout my career and some uh, stuff that has also been uh, studied about uh, language acquisition. OK, so I hope you enjoy and uh, I hope uh, it helps improving your your English skills. OK, so um, I'm going to start sharing here my. Um, OK, my PowerPoint. Just a second. Um, OK, I'm, I'm clicking on, on share. But. I uh, no share. I think I found it. Um, here. OK. Window. Found it. Um, um, can everybody see here what what I'm? Yep. Yeah, my screen. Thank you very much. So, uh, what you need uh, to do to learn English is is the name of 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 the talk we having today. Um, this presentation will be based on, on Paul Nation's book, uh, What Do You Need to Do to Learn a Foreign Language? So we, uh, I kind of adapted it to English and I uh, added 
um, a few more things. So it, it's more uh, to you, OK, to what to our needs, not for every language, but specifically for English. Uh, Polynesian is a very important uh, linguistics researcher from uh, New Zealand, and uh, he uh, his main focus of studies uh, uh, is language, it's frequency. So we're going to talk a lot about uh, word frequency and how about how uh, frequency can help you understand and speak uh, English better. So uh, we start here with um, some influences in learning a foreign language. I'm sure everybody here has uh, their own reasons for for learning and and um, and I had mine also. Um, I started speaking English when I was very young. My my father, he was he was an exchange student. He lived in in the U.S. for a few uh, for six months in California. Um, and when my father returned to to Brazil, he started dating a. Uh, um, an American girl and that American girl lived in my mother's house, so that's the way he got to learn. He got to meet my mom. Uh, and. Um, and then. Uh, 20 something years after. Uh, I I met my wife because I was going out with a <laughs> with an American girl that lived in her house, too, so. Uh, I mean, my life in uh, English is intertwined. Uh, my father owned a, an English school, Fisk, and I started studying there when I was about eight. Um, and and when I was about seventeen, uh, I I was in a program of ex exchange student program and I was I lived in South Africa for one year. And then uh, English has been part of my life, English teaching. I've been teaching English for 21 years now and. And um, it's 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 really what I do and it's my life. I tried not to teach English for a while. I wanted to teach Portuguese, but uh, English is always has always called me back to uh, to do what I'm doing. OK, um, and then here we have the influences for learning a foreign language. So. Um, and the, it comes from a, a research about third language uh, acquisition. But it's it's it also applies to second language acquisition. So uh, the the main influence for when you learn a third language is when you speak a second language. OK, so uh, you can see here in the top L2 English um, is the biggest influence for learning another language. So when you learn a language, usually you want to learn some other languages too. And, and it makes it much easier to to uh, learn some other languages. Um, I've also studied Spanish. Uh, with some depth. And uh, a, a bit of Italian, I can speak a little Italian and I'm still learning. I'm, I'm very excited about learning Italian, but my Italian is still very bad. Uh, and uh, but when you learn a language, you want to learn some other languages, so uh, that's a big influence. And um, internal motivation is the second big motivation for 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 learning a second or a third language. So if you want to do it, you do it. And I'm going to show you that there are some people think, uh, believe uh, in some influences that are quite false. OK, motivation is, is bigger than almost everything. Um, attitude, 
So you have the motivation and the attitude. You, you need to match those two. What, what do you mean by attitude? Well, you want to do it and you are going to make it. So you have a plan and you uh, uh, and you follow that plan. And that's that's the attitude. Um, age. OK, so age has a smaller influence on, on learning a foreign language. So uh, people believe that the younger you learn, the better you the, the, the better you learn. But that's not. That doesn't happen all the time. Uh, some studies have shown that uh, when you are. Older, you learn language faster than when you are younger. So it's a myth, the fact that you learn much faster when you're young. But a fact is when you're young, you learn your pronunciation usually gets better. But overall, English uh, only after I mean, just if you started as a kid and you kept on studying for the years after and because if you want to learn a language and you are older, you learn faster than, than the kids. So probably because of internal motivation and attitude that are the, the, the greatest, uh, 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 that are the top influences we have there. Um, we have external motivation, which is also important, like uh, how you want to get a job or something, but uh, it's very different from internal motivation. I mean, um, you have a family SES, which is like the family influence, and like in my case, was was a very important influence. Uh, my as my dad was a was an English uh, a teacher, and most of my uh, uh, uncles they lived uh, abroad, and, and there were always exchange students around in my house, in my uh, grandparents' house. So um, yeah, it was important for me. Um, anxiety plays a, a role too. And, and it's uh, it's not a very good thing. It's never a good thing to be anxious <laughs> about learning uh, 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 another language. OK, um, then you have like when if you speak Chinese, for example, which is a very a language that is very far from the the the. the from English, let's say, or uh, it plays a, a small Part, so you say, oh, you don't learn because you don't learn English because you speak Chinese and it's very different. So it doesn't it doesn't play a, a very big role there. It's not so important the language you speak for learning some other language. Gender, if you're a male or female, almost nothing to males and females. They learn a foreign language um, basically the same way. It doesn't change much. Nonverbal IQ plays almost no role in influencing uh, you learning a foreign language. So you think, oh, uh, some guy he speaks a very good English, so he must be very intelligent. No, it has it has almost nothing to do Intel intelligence. It's not does not play an important part. And not I mean, of course, intelligence plays a, an important part in everything we do. But um, IQ tests are not, um, let's say, does not influence learning a foreign language. OK, so you say oh, I'm stupid. I don't <laughs> learn a, a foreign language. I mean, it, it, uh, big variation of IQs have shown no uh, or almost no uh, difference in, in learning a, a foreign language. And music training, uh, lots of people think that music training is very important in learning a foreign language, uh, and it also plays a very small role there. Um, this is this is a very interesting study. It was um, published in Nature uh, last year, and I think that some myths are uh, kind of uh, stripped out here, like. And I think the most important one is 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 uh, nonverbal IQ uh, that uh, played no that had 
very small impact in learning a, a foreign language. OK, so you don't have to be book intelligent to read a foreign language, to learn a foreign language. Um, and, and to learn a foreign language, we, uh, the United States, they um, they made a study for uh, the Foreign Service Institute uh, of United States for language difficulty rankings. So uh, they what what they needed was they needed to train uh, diplomats to speak uh, the foreign languages because they had to travel and they had to live in, in some other countries. And uh, and so. Therefore, those diplomats, they spoke English and here uh, uh, are. It shows how long it takes. Uh, uh, speaking English speaking people to learn some other languages, so. Um, Z, the category zero here is English speakers, so they have no problem. In Great Britain, which is in pink here, they. Um, they already speak English, but then uh, in category one is red. It takes a, a person like 600 hours um, to. Speak proficiently and read proficiently, so to hold the conversation and to read and understand well, it takes 600 hours. OK, uh, 600 hours of learning, it's a lot of time. So. Um, it would be like for. One year and a half, about eight hours weekly, so if you study eight hours per week. It would take you one year and it would take an American one year and a half to learn Portuguese, Spanish, French, Italian. Right. Those are like the, the easiest languages and in Norwegian and Swedish. Um, it would take them 600 hours and then we have uh, like to learn German. German is 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 a is a language that's related to English, but uh, German grammar. Um, I don't know if any of you have have been able to <laughs> have uh, to study German before, but but the grammar is is very uh, difficult. So it would take 750 hours for a diplomat to learn German, and then we have 900 hours. Um, some other languages, and then even we have here like Finnish uh, in, in light blue on the top and Hungarian here in the middle. It would it would take like about. Um, over a thousand hours and and here number five, they two two thousand and two hundred hours. It would be uh, the the. Um, the Asian countries, so Japanese. Chinese. Uh, it's. It takes uh, much more time to learn and and that's quite obvious. Be, but uh, it's important to, to say that the closer the relationship between the language you're learning, you, you speak as yes, your native language and the language you're you're you want to learn the faster you learn in English. Um, it's quite close to Portuguese. I mean, it, it's a two way thing, so it takes. Um, 600 hours for an English speaking person to learn Portuguese and, and for a, a speak Portuguese speaking person, it wouldn't take much more or less uh, to speak English. So uh, the the. They are not closely related languages because English is Anglo-Saxon and Portuguese is a Romance language, but um, they share lots of vocabulary um, from French influence, and we could talk about that in some other uh, opportunity. But yeah, like almost 70% of the words from the 
Oxford Dictionary are uh, Latin, related to Latin, right? So um, it's, it's not so bad for a Brazilian to speak English. It's not so difficult. Uh, why? Because they, they, th those are languages that have uh, a relationship. They, they have the same uh, type of writing and, and uh, lots of words they share. And so um, it would be much more difficult for a Chinese or for an Arab or for even for a Finnish person. Uh, from Finland when you look at the top there. Um, and then uh, th those are, are the principles uh, that Paul Nation uh, talked about for, for learning a foreign language. So the first principle here, uh, he says, is work out your needs and learn what is most useful for you. So. Um, what you want with English is the first thing you, you should ask yourself. Um, you want to read. You want to write, you want to. Speak. Or you want to do. Like everything, <laughs> OK, so. Um, you have to think about that because it's not a problem to just say, oh, no, I just want to to. I just want to uh, watch movies and understand. I, I, I don't feel I, I need to talk to anyone. I, I don't want to do that. I feel uncomfortable. OK, so that's your need. And then you can have a strategy for, for doing that. OK, just for uh, developing your, or your listening skills. Or, or you could say, oh, I want to write uh, um, scientific um, papers. So I need to develop my writing and. And, and then. Uh, there are different. Uh, um, there, are, those are different skills, and, and you 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 can work differently uh, according to what you want. Okay, but if you want to learn everything, you should balance your learning. And we're gonna talk about that. Uh, we have listening, writing, reading, and speaking, and you have to balance that to. Uh, uh, to be proficient in all those areas, OK? Apply conditions that help learning. Um, conditions are, are, are very important, the, the environment uh, for learning. So if, if, you, if you are studying at a, a language institute, those are th this like one condition or you if you are studying by yourself, it's another condition. If you decide to uh, to go to a foreign country to study there, it's another condition. So um, you you have to think about that and um, keep motivated and work hard. Do what needs to be done. Okay. And as we uh, we we saw in 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 the previous slide, the motivation is is the main is the most important. Uh, aspect for uh, lang foreign language learning. OK. So let me go here. Uh, then we talk here about balancing your learning. Um, so balancing your learning is probably the most important principle, but it does require some skill and effort in applying it. The pr principle of the first trend say that if you want to have a well balanced language course, you need to spend equal amounts of time. So think about this word, equal amounts of time. For uh, for one, learn, learning from meaning focused input, uh, listening and reading. OK, so what do you mean meaning in focused input? Uh, you, you get actual texts and and uh, um, and let's say movies or uh, songs. OK, um, because why? Because they're meaningful, they're, they're meaningful, they're real. They the foreign like the, the native speakers, they wrote those. <laughs> those texts and they uh, wrote those songs and those series. So yes. Um, learning from meaning focused output, speaking and writing, so. Um, you have to have a meaning when when you when you when you talk to someone. 
is much better than when you talk to yourself. <laughs> and um, of course, you can learn a lot by talking to yourself. I do it sometimes but uh when you when you think about this uh, um meaning focused output it would be important to have someone else to talk to um then number three here uh, we have language focused learning studying pronunciation vocabulary grammar of course and fluency development getting good at using what you already know so what is fluency you already know a lot. Everybody here, everybody, I'm sure everybody that is uh, uh, watching um, this webinar knows a lot of English. And but sometimes uh, you don't practice, so you, you you have no chance to know what you know, because we usually when you, especially English that we have this input, so information about the English language. Uh, gets uh, to you all the time. You receive that that information all the time, uh, and you don't realize you know as much as you know. But as soon as you start you start developing fluency or start speaking, um, you 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 get to like you you start throwing up stuff like speak, saying words that you thought you didn't know. Why? Because they are. They are in your memory, but they have never really been activated in, in, in output or you have never uh, had a chance to, to speak. But uh, usually, usually uh, uh, fluency development is, is what I like teaching the most because uh, I see people get really surprised with what they say. And I, I, I feel that you have had the opportunity of, of, of having that feeling of like, wow, did I just say that? Uh, how come? You know, it's it's very surprising and, and a very um, gratifying thing. OK, um, and then we, we're going to talk about the importance of vocabulary. Uh, vocabulary is the most important thing that you can learn in when you, when you talk about English or any other word, um, there have been some studies that show that uh, grammar of oh, vocabulary plays a much bigger role in learning than grammar. So um, now we're going to focus a bit on, on vocabulary here. And um, to be familiar with 98% of the running words in a friendly form of conversation, or to be familiar with 98% of the run of the running words in a movie, you need to know about 6,000 different words. So if you know 6,000 words, you understand about 98% of everything that has been said. Um, so you are basically you 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 were fluent at least in listening. Um, but to be familiar with 98% of the running words in a novel or a newspaper, you need to know about 8,000 to 9,000 different words. So when you talk about newspaper or a novel, like a, a book, uh, uh, you, you need to know more words than in a movie or a conversation. So a written language is, is more formal and and the the scope of language that is used is is much more vast. Um, native speakers learn around 1,000 different words a year until they reach a vocabulary size close to 20,000 words. So, natives, if you're born speaking English, you you learn your your vocabulary size is about is close to 20,000. However, as we shall see, not all words are created equal and with a vocabulary of 1000 to 2000 words. Of the most useful words, we can, can hold adequate conversation and get most things done. So guys, this is this is very good news um, for me. Um, when you think about 6000 words to understand 
98% of a conversation, it's a lot. When, when you go like 8,000 to 9,000 words to understand the novel, it's a lot. Um, native knows close to 20,000 words, it's a lot. But if you know what, like from 1,000 to 2,000, you get most things done. So you you understand uh, most uh, uh, of a conversation and you can also express yourself with um, some confidence fully, okay? And we're gonna talk about that. I think this is this is very good and, and it helps a lot with uh, to build in uh, confidence. From 1,000 to 2,000, guys, that's if you want to hold a conversation, that's enough. And I'm going to show you some 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 data about that. Uh, word frequency. A rather small number of words are very frequent. The 10 most frequent frequent words of English typically cover 25% of the words in any text, and the 100 most frequent words cover around 50%. So if you know what the, the the one most frequent frequent words in English, you know you can understand fifty percent of it, everything that's written. I mean, it's a lot. So those hundred most frequent words they repeat a lot. Um, and have a look at the page and see how often the word occurs. It occurs almost every line, like. Uh, we're talking about the word the. Okay, the is the most common uh, frequent word in English. It repeats itself all the time. Like here in the small text, there are a few thes. By itself, the word the covers 7% of any written English text. The most 1,000 words cover around 80% of the words in most texts. So if you know 1,000 words, you can understand 80%, not 1,000 words, but the 1,000 most frequent words in English, you understand about 80% of the text, which is a lot. So it's important to know the most frequent words first to uh, have some confidence speaking English. Uh, in some languages, the cover, uh, coverage figures are even higher than in, than in English, right? And um, only a small number of those words are function words, words like the, uh, of, because, it, one, which, that. Most are nouns, adverbs, adjectives, and adverbs, which are content words. So uh, function, function words are the most common words in every text. Right. So if you like look at the the most common uh, of because those are the most frequent, but they are few. There are not many uh, function words. Um, but then there are the nouns, verbs, adjectives that are very frequent, and those are. Uh, 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 this is where you know you should really uh, pay attention to. So vocabulary profiles, um, watching series. This, this is a research I made for this presentation. Uh, I, 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 here uh, we have, uh, I decided to, to check the profile of Friends, Peaky Blinders, and Games of Thrones. Let's first take a look at Friends. Um, on the top left of the of this black square here, we have frequency level. K1, uh, it's the thousand most frequent words. It means that those words from the Friends episode, they are part of the 1,000 most frequent frequent words of English. K2, 2,000. K3, 3,000. Uh, what did I do? I basically Google it here and went like, um, and I came like Google um, and I wrote like friends, 
script one season script season one friends transcripts and here monica gets a roommate it's where i clicked the first episode i copied this here the whole episode came to this software here which is lex tutor pasted it here in the square, submitted. And then it came with this output here. So 91% of the words in France are K1 words. So 91% so of what's spoken in this first episode of Friends, it's part of the one the first thou most frequent thousand words in English. So if you know the one most frequent, uh, the, 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 the thousand words that are most frequent in English, you understand 91% of, of friends. If you know the 2000 most frequent words, you understand 94%. Right. If you know 3000, you understand 95. So uh, it's, it's a very small change when you look like from 1,000, 2,000 and 3,000, right? Professor Teixeira. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes. For some reason, it's not possible anymore to see uh, this live presentation. Are we supposed to continue seeing? Oh, oh I thought I was, I was showing you. I'm sorry. Um, let no, me, it, it was let working. Me you. Yeah, I'm going to share with you uh, what I did. Yeah. So um, just a second, guys. Thank you very much, Andrea. Otherwise, I would sound crazy here. Um, OK. Um, the, no. no. Not this. Um, OK, so I'm going to I'm going to just return to, to what, what I was doing here. Um, I'm going to show you. The profiles. Of. Friends. So friends, Peaky Blinders in in Games of Thrones. So if you know uh, K1. 91%, if you know 1,000, 91% of the words of, from friends, you understand? Uh, if you know 2,094, if you know, know 3,000, you understand 95% of the words. Okay, so there's not a, a very big change here from, you know, the, the, the hardest thing is to know the, the 1,000 most frequent, because, uh, and then the differences, they get smaller and smaller. And then I, uh, after friends, is, friends is famous for for being easy to understand. I don't know if you have watched friends before. Um, I'm a bit old, but yes, lots of people learn English because of friends. And um, and then I, I thought, okay, I'm I'm gonna take a another one, Peaky Blinders, which is British, and to see uh, how much impact the the thousand most frequent frequent words have on Peaky Blinders. And then if you know the one most 1000 most frequent frequent words from English, you understand 89% of the language in Peaky Blinders. So it's it's almost the same as friends. Just a small difference. This 2% difference here uh, makes the Peaky Blinders sound very formal, uh, some not formal, but but very British and, and, and more uh, sophisticated, so maybe. But um, but it's a, it's a very small difference. Uh, if you know the one thousand most frequent thousand, you understand 89, 2, 93, 3, 94. So very small difference from um, friends. OK, we, we're taking a look at the frequency level, the first line and the last line, the, the cumul token token. Okay. 
And then I thought, all right, and then Games of Thrones. Games of Thrones, um, it's supposed to be like a foreign speaking, like foreign speaking people speaking English. And and then I wanted to see the vocabulary profile of, of this series too. And uh, in Games of Thrones, it's somewhere between Peaky Blinders and Friends, but very close when you look at the token, cumul percentage of like the last line here, cumul token, 89, 88.9, 93.6, 95.2, if you know 3000. So um, it's very important to know those 1000 most frequent frequent words. And because with that, you're going to get around a, a, a lot. You're going to be able to talk to people. We're going to be able to understand most of what you hear. OK, you don't need like 20,000 or, or um, like a, a native speaker. Um, and then a, a large number of words are very infrequent. Half of the words in any text will occur only once in that text. So if you read a novel which is 1000 words long from beginning to end, you'll meet around 5000 different words. So it's a lot. Captain Blood is 150, 15 uh, words long. It's 15,000 around words long and contains 5,000 different word families. Professor uh, Teixeira. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt again. Uh, no. For some reason, we're not able to see uh, the screen again. We just see a file uh, named Larger Context. Uh, okay, let me just, yeah, thank you, Andre. Maybe that's just a, a technical problem with the, the software, with the platform. Okay, I'm going to share the, the, the screen and maybe, maybe things get better because I was sharing the window. Uh, I see. Yeah, yeah um, that's better. Yeah, right. Um, yep. Can you can you now see what I'm? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so half of those different words you meet, uh, well, over two thousand occur only once. So if you read this book, Captain Blood, uh, two thousand words in this book occur only once. So you only see this word once and to learn a, 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 a new word, you have to. See how this word is used a few times. Some people say like 10 times. Then. Uh, maybe reading a book. Uh, to. Learn like some very different vocabulary and check that vocabulary uh, all the time on, on in the dictionary, it won't help you learn much. OK, so why? Because maybe there is a, a very big gap between what you know. What you should know to read this book and what you actually know. OK, so uh, one important thing is when you read a book is to read a book that is uh, of your level. Because if there are too many words you don't know or they only appear once, you won't be able to memorize this word. OK. Um, one of the skills in learning a language is to know what words are worth le learning at each stage of, prof your, of your proficiently proficiency development. Right, so if you're a basic student, there are like the, the most frequent 1000 words you should know if you're uh, uh, um, intermediate, you should focus on the second thousand and third thousand and so on. OK, because maybe there are words that you shouldn't focus on because they, they, they are very infrequent and. You you won't see them much to memorize them and it will uh, waste your time. Here. Um, and, and then we have here how much language you need to learn to cope with being a foreign tourist. So you are 
a Brazilian that is in the US. So there is good news here with around 120 words and phrases, uh, which would take a total of four hours of deliberate study to learn. You can deal with the most basic requirements. So these basic requirements include meeting and greeting people, being polite, please, thank you, going shopping, ordering food, seeking directions, reading signs, finding somewhere to stay, talking about yourself and controlling language input. So if you know 120 words, very frequent words, you can uh, 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 cope with being a tourist, okay? Of course, you won't hold a conversation, which is something different, but yeah, you can, uh, uh, um, you'll not, you, you can order food and you can find a hotel, for, ex for instance. So um, that's very good news, I think. So learning strategies. Now, now let's say you want to learn English. Uh, what do you need to do? Find out how much you know already so you can test yourself. Uh, I'm going to show you some tests. Um, finding out about yourself, about useful words and phrases by using a Concord dancer. It's also good. And here we have uh, uh, the Lex Tutor, which is uh, an, a software uh, you can check um, for for doing this. Let me just get here. Um, I'm going to show you this software, the Lex Tutor. Um, this is the 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 research I did in friends. Uh, I did it with Lex Tutor. Let me make it smaller. OK, um, here at Lex Luthor, there are some te tests. OK, here you go, clicking tests. Um, those are our are, are, are tests like uh, scientific tests, so. You can be sure that they're usually good and you have like, um, for example, um, vocabulary size tests. And um, let me just see vocabulary VLT, the first one. So type numbers in the box. Uh, we have here, they start with the 2000 level. So it's, it's, it's like K2. And you match here and they give you the result. And then 3000 level, 5000 level. University word list, 10,000 level. You check your vocabulary and it gives you some output. Um, there are very good ones here, um, like the phrasal test. So go on, what does go on mean? And, and then you check here and you're gonna check like your 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 English and, and, the free, and your frequency. Uh, the frequency of the words, you know, like the first thousand, second thousand, until like it goes until like four, the, the 14th sub thousand or 17th sub thousand. So uh, you can check like how much you know. That's very uh, important. OK, when you are um, working. With um, learning. Um, and also here a concord, a concord dancer uh, i'm going to show you uh, how this software also works as a concord dancer um, like here you click concordance and um, english and you go like um, you want to know let's say expression uh, depends of let's check the concordance with uh, depends of uh, search um oh, the wrong place here at the top um, keywords depends of 
get concordance. So you only see one string. The effectiveness, effect, the effectiveness of the second vote depends, of course, on its first. So the, it's it's not really depends of is depends of course, okay. And then you see well if there's only one um, string here, depends of must be a wrong. And then you go like depends on, and you get it. And then you see like really how it's used in different real contexts. And you can click on on here and um, and and check like the, the 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 larger context to to really understand how the words used um, this is much better than a dictionary because it shows like many uh, occurrences of the same phenomena and um, it really helps learning um, and and uh, I'm I'm already in the in the, in the last part of, of the presentation OK, so this is just those are just some tips uh, for you to to learn more. Um, balance your learning, um, learning, learn, I'm sorry, uh, through listening and reading. So reading while listening, it's very good. You listen and you read at the same time, like when you when you watch a series or something, you put like the subtitles on and you, and you, re and you read. Or, or you read the script uh, as you you listen, like or when you listen to music and uh, you, and you follow the lyrics. This is very good. It's a very good technique for for learning. Um, then you have your. Uh, can you learn a language through reading? Yes, you can. But read texts which are the right level for you, because if you read texts that are very difficult. It, it will make you uh, very tired and, and, and uneasy uh, with doing that, and it will like put your motivation on the ground. So you should learn, you should read books that are uh, made for you, for your level. And here uh, there are some graded readers in this second uh, box here below. Like Oxford has the Oxford Bookworms, and the Cambridge has, has the University Press, where uh, the Penguin readers, which are very famous. So you can go like, if you're a basic student, you read a basic book, um, intermediate, an intermediate book, and so on. So you, you, you keep your motivation up, and you learn new words, and you get more fluent. So yes, you can learn through reading, but you have to read things that are good for your level. Um, can you learn through speaking? Surprisingly, yes. Um, the quickest way to begin speaking in another language is to memorize useful phrases and sentences. So you memorize those important ones, usually with songs, right? Uh, like I remember when I, when I, when I was abroad and 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 I faced like some problem and, and I remember the song from the Beatles. Uh, we can work it out. <laughs> we can work it out. There was a problem that I said, oh, we can work it out. I, I remembered the expression from the Beatles song. So um, this is this is very good. Uh, uh, memorize useful phrases and sentences and um, like vocab, like greetings, expressions of politeness, language for shopping, moving around numbers language from the restaurant, descriptions of yourself, OK? Uh, if you memorize those expressions, uh, it's it's a good way to learn through speaking and you use them and, and it's awesome. Uh, so uh, you can exercise yourself uh, using those memorized, memorized sentences in dialogues, role play. You need two people for role play. You talking to someone else and prepare talks are very good too. If you prepare a talk to to about an, a subject you like or you know and you present to someone, you learn English uh, by doing this. Um, how can you learn language through writing? Um, 
Well, you need a dictionary. You need to focus on the language. You need to be accurate. You are not there to to correct uh, anybody, uh, to anybody to to help you. So, uh, it's it's a good exercise for 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 uh, learning a language. Um, and in writing is easier if you bring knowledge of what you write. So if you write something you know about, and it, it it's more also gives it's uh, it's more gratifying. Uh, okay, so choose a topic that is relevant for you, read about it in your first language, and then you write about it. Okay, listening tips. So if you want to 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 improve your listening, well, first thing, wear earphones. OK, people that speak English, they usually listen. Uh, uh, Andre has lived abroad. I don't know if any of you have also, but uh, people usually listen to, to, to the TV very loud. It's very different from from here in Brazil. So. Um, uh, if you wear earphones, and to, to, to watch a series that you like or news that you like or whatever you like. Uh, it will help you understand much more the language, much better. Um, because we usually here in Brazil, we listen to the TV very low. And if you write, if you, and if you read the subtitles, it's very, uh, uh, you can even uh, like put the volume down and, and just read. So it's important to, to have a good quality of sound and it should be loud. OK, so turn it up. Pay attention to the pronunciation, not just reading. OK, we, we are our brains are able to do the two things at the same time. With no, with, it's not a big deal for our brain. OK, so in no problem in reading. <laughs> if you uh, read the subtitles, it's OK. And subtitles in Portuguese are also OK if you are watching a series and you're just beginning to learn. Why? Because you can read the subtitle in Portuguese and pay attention to what is, is being said. Uh, our brains can also do that. So it's, it's not a big deal. If you start uh, watching a, a series or a movie you like and in, with the subtitles in English and suddenly you say, oh, I don't, I'm tired of that. I, I, I don't understand. You can uh, watch it. Uh, with subtitles in Portuguese, as long as you pay attention to the language and you wear earphones or you turn the volume up and have a good quality, good quality speakers. OK, and then um, we have here some reading tips, reading tips, read fast, try not to stop too much, use the dictionary with caution. So if you want to be a good reader, you first you read after you read a paragraph or after you read a page, you think about what you read and then you you, you look for, for, for words in the dictionary. OK, uh, because if you stop too much. If you hesitate too much, you won't uh, be able to understand the context and, and, and your motivation goes down. So when you read faster, your brain pro processes it faster. And even if you don't know like all the words, just part of them, you can get some meaning. And after reading an entire part as or a paragraph or, or a chapter or a page, you return, think about what, what didn't I understand? I didn't understand this and that. And then you look for, for the words that will solve your problem. You don't, you don't need to translate the whole thing. Otherwise it gets very tiring. OK, and uh, finally, um, I have here uh, we have here the, the Pol Nation resources where I got uh, most of this information from, OK, from the University of New Zealand. Um, I'm going to. He's really awesome. I'm going to uh, put here on the, on the chat. And um, let me just check it out here. Uh, no. Um, yeah, I'm going to find out where the chat is. I, I'm not really used to work with with Microsoft and Teams. Um, uh, people, I think it's here. 
Não, não tive. Uh... É, mas, se eu não me engano, é de... Ok, um, ok, you, you, you can teach me uh, afterwards and then I post it there. So, um, so basically that's it. And thank you very much for your time. It was really appreciated. Uh, I could talk about that the whole day long. I'm very, as you probably have seen, I'm very passionate about linguistics and learning a foreign language. And uh, you can uh, talk to me. Just uh, uh, I'll, I'll also put my email on on the chat so you can uh, reach me if you feel like. Okay. And thank you very much, Andre, for, for your invitation. And I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, Professor Teixeira, very much for your presentation. It was amazing. Uh, thank you for sharing a little bit of your life, of how you ended up learning English, right? Uh, I'll start the discussion on this subject and, and then whoever wants to participate with comments or questions, please click on, on the raise your hand button, okay? You, you click on reactions first and then uh, on the raise your hand button, okay? Uh, Professor Teixeira, you, you shared very interesting data. You broke some myths, right? Uh, some false paradigms. Uh, one thing that has always caught my attention when it comes to the learning process of a second language uh, is the influence of age, the age factor, right? Uh, the influence of age on the learning process of a second language. Uh, we all must have heard at least once in our lives uh, that the younger we start learning a second language, the better, right? And, and I have always asked myself, uh, what are the main reasons behind that? Why do young people absorb a second language faster and easier than old people? Uh, is it simply because young people have less information stored in their minds compared to old people? But you showed us that uh, the age factor does not play an important role uh, compared to other factors, right? Uh, that's very interesting. And uh, to tell you the truth, uh, Professor, I have always thought that motivation uh, would play a big role. Uh, at least it, it played. Uh, a big role, an important role in my case. Uh, I remember that back to my first years learning English, I would picture myself using the language when traveling abroad. So traveling uh, was my main motivation and that would make me strive as much as I could to study English. Uh, on the other hand, I remember very vividly uh, that some of my classmates at a private English school uh, did not like to study English. Uh, they were there whether because their parents forced them to study English or because they knew that learning English uh, was important for them to get better jobs. So this would make things harder for them to learn English. Uh, so. I just have to, to say thank you for, again, for sharing those data. Thank you for the tips, uh, the software suggestions, uh, the English test, uh, test suggestions. I, I wrote down some very important things that you mentioned uh, on your presentation, uh, things that caught my attention. Uh, first, the uh, for, for, for instance, the, two-way street in how easy it is for you to learn a second language. Uh, you mentioned, for example, that for an English native speaker to learn Portuguese, uh, they face uh, some difficulties very similar to the difficulties that uh, a Portuguese native speaker would, uh, would find when learning English. So, I, I didn't know it was it was a two-way 
street uh, that that caught my attention. And another myth that you probably broke is related to the subtitles in in Portuguese when watching when practicing your listening uh, with uh, TV shows, for instance. And we all also must have heard somebody saying, "Okay, use subtitles when 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 watching a." a a TV show in English, but use it in English, not in Portuguese, as if using the subtitle in Portuguese would be something very wrong, right? But, so, but can you can you pay attention to the pronunciation while reading in Portuguese? I mean, can you yeah. do it? Yeah, we can do it. Mm -hmm. That's do right. It. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for for uh, your your comments uh, before. Uh, opening here the, the opportunity for other participants to, to make questions and comments. Uh, if you could, uh, I would appreciate it if you could uh, comment a little bit more about the the anxiety factor. I, I was trying to, to understand what, what would it be like? I mean, uh, is anxiety in this case just uh, your you 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 are willing to learn it. Uh, uh, is it connected to, to some other role? I, I didn't quite understand uh, uh, what would be anxiety in this case, in this context. Well, um, I also found it difficult to understand because um, there uh, we, we, we were talking about a, a positive um, uh, let me think positive um, positive things like to learn a language and then uh, anxiety was put there was in something like uh, as if it was uh, it, it as if it played a, a role in in learning and 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 anxiety in my opinion, is, is, is a negative thing, right? Um, I, 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 don't, I, can't, I can't think about a, a positive outcome of anxiety. So uh, when, when you, most, most of my students that are, were anxious, uh, they, 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 they didn't reach like the level they, they could if they weren't. And actually, the, in, in Holland, uh, Netherlands, they, they studied. Uh, it was a very interesting study I, about a, uh, some students. They drank like a, a pint of beer before going to class. And then they check uh, the, the, the vocabulary use of, of, of the students, a group of students that drank a pint of beer and the ones that didn't do it. And, and the ones that drank a pint of beer before going to class, they, 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 they displayed like their vocabulary was, 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 uh, was better. They used more words than, than, than the other group. And, and the only thing that it shows it was like, uh, if you're less anxious, you speak. It's what is that? It's what I mean. What the study said. And it was a serious study. <laughs> if you're less anxious, you speak like better English. So um, I don't see a positive role in anxiety whatsoever. You you mentioned something very interesting. It, I think it makes sense. Uh... Uh, because if we think better, even in our native language, uh, if we are anxious, too much anxious, uh, we are not going to be able to express ourselves uh, well or as well as we could. So uh, probably that's the reason. Uh, of course, we are not uh, stimulating anyone to drink alcohol to learn English, right? <laughs> uh, guys, uh, would anyone like to participate? Uh, you can introduce yourself, say your name or 
the, the institution you're connected to. Uh, don't don't be don't hesitate to ask. Uh, we have here a diverse audience. Uh, I appreciate that even people with a basic level of English uh, were interested to participate. Uh, we just saw that exposing yourself uh, to English is a good thing. So. Uh, would anyone like to participate? You don't have to have necessarily a question or you just can comment or share a little bit about uh, your inputs uh, on what has been discussed here. Uh, is there anyone who would like to participate? Just, just click uh, on reactions and then on raise your hand button and we can, we can have a discussion here. Come on, guys. Don't practice just your listening. Practice your speaking, too. Uh, OK, André Luiz Alves, and then Ana. Somebody here rose there. His hand or Ana Clara. OK, so first, Andre Luis, we cannot hear you. Uh, and then Ana Clara. OK. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I live in Montes Claros, too, the same city as Andre and Luis Fernando. I'm uh, a friend of uh, Andre Taidi. And uh, Luis Fernando is my son. I study English uh, when I was younger. I stood at uh, CCAA, an English course too. I studied the, the beginner level and the advanced level. It was a total of uh, 13 books. And uh, uh, now I'm uh, trying to, to improve my speaking. Uh, my listening, I think uh, listening is better now. I understood uh, what the professor Teixeira said uh, and uh, Andrea Taid too. And uh, my goal now is to be uh, to become fluent in English. My goal is to I graduated uh, in December in technology uh, on information technology. And uh, I want to to move abroad to another country to to find a job on information of technology in another country. And uh, I want to, to become fluent in English. I'm, I think I'm at uh, uh, a good level, but I am not fluent yet. And I'm participating here to, to improve my speaking. Okay, thank you, all, all of you. Thank you, André. Thank you. Uh, uh, Andre, um, in my opinion, you are fluent. Um, because a fluency is, is when, you, when you can, uh, at least linguistically say, fluency uh, is related to you give the information that is necessary in, in a context. So, for example, let's say, we talked about uh, traveling abroad and the basic information you need for booking a ticket, an airplane or asking for food is 120 words. But if that's all you need to do, and if you know these words, you're very fluent in doing this. And, um, and like right now, from your, your speech, uh, you are uh, you were very fluent. You could get your information through uh, 
everybody here, and I'm sure everybody um, understood what what you what you uh, what you were saying. And I think what you really want is polishing up your English, like as you do with polishing up, like with your nails, like it's like polishing, right? So so you you uh, you want to to improve and and those little things that you still uh, feel uncomfortable sometimes with practice, you get better and and um, in what you're doing in, in your life, I mean, with with uh, working with technology is the best way to live abroad. It's, it's, the, it's the job that that gets the most chance to to live abroad from all the jobs. So I think you're you, you're, you're in the right track. Uh, uh, like uh, feeling that you want you have to, you need to improve your English to go abroad. It's, it's a very good, very good track. OK, thank you, Professor. No thank problem. you very much, uh, Andrea. It's it's a pleasure uh, to have you here. Thank you very much. Uh, now I, I would like Anna Clara to participate. Please. Hi, do I have to show my face? Not necessarily. It would be to. amazing, but just if you want to. Yeah, OK, I'll, I'll do it because it's it's our first meeting, so that, that would be cool, right? <laughs> and it's easier for me if I can see your lips moving. Yeah, ah, OK. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Um, actually, my point was going to be about accent. Like how kids, uh, again, related to age, how kids deal better with accents than compared to old people. I mean, they, they, they're, they get used to the languages they're studying uh, a little a little bit better than old people that like when we have immigrants going to uh, then move abroad they you can usually say you you pick up on their accents how why does that happen it doesn't matter if it's english or portuguese you always know that someone is not a native native speaker speaker because they have accents but when it's Tiny children. A very good question. A very right. Good question. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, well, there are many factors. Uh, first of all, yes, we, if when if you learn a foreign language, the uh, when you're young, in your first years of age, um, some people say five, some people say eight, some people say ten. But uh, if you learn in the first years, your accent is better. It's. Um, what what has been uh, uh, the, the surprising factor that is more recent is that older people they learn faster than kids probably because they want to and kids they they just learn because their parents send them to to the school and stuff like that so um but yeah when they when they learn when they're young they learn more and and there are some cognitive reasons and and there are some physical reasons. Um, uh, the most important thing, uh, the the physical reasons, is that our vocal tract is is muscular. So we have muscles in our tongue and we have muscles in in, in our uh, oral tract. The whole thing, and when we speak. One, uh, 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 let's say, any language, some parts of that oral tract they get more muscular than others. Um, for example, Brazilian Portuguese, we never stick our tongues out of our mouths. Like, look at me, like people like in California they say. California, California, or in English they say like think that they stick their in Spanish in Spanish too, like in Spain, they 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 stick their tongues out of their mouths. In Portuguese from Portugal, they they, they have the like air yeah, like Portugal. We don't do it yeah. here. Our tongues are it's in our mouths all the time. Like phonetics, how when we try to speak Chinese, when we, we are learning learning Chinese. They are 
certain sounds we can do because they're, 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 they don't exist in Portuguese. Something like that, right? Yeah. Like, in, in, yeah. Through, that's the, through, the first. We don't uh -huh. have it. Yeah. yeah, this is the first part. Yeah, and then we they use their throats. We don't use it, so we have no on a vocal track. I mean, we're not used to it, and 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 this is the physical part. We're not used to make those sounds, and we don't know how to do them. How to how to do it? We have never been trained to do that. Um, and there are the cognitive reasons, and those and this is the hardest part, because the physical part. I mean. You can like work out <laughs> and, and and get through them, but but the cognitive reasons they 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 go far beyond. Um, like when in English, uh, there's a sound that is ah, like Jack, I have I have a car, uh, a Brad, like in Brad Pitt. It's not Brad Pitt. Not bread. It's not Jack Nicholson. It's not I have. It's I have Jack back. Um, Michael Jackson sings I'm bad. I'm bad. It's not I'm bad. I'm not. It's not I'm bad. I'm bad. We don't have that sound in Portuguese. And 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 our brains. It, what what happens in our brain like? semantically, phonetically, actually, phonetically. Uh, when you don't have a sound in our language, we try to, our brain, like, sends it straight to some other sound. Say, so, oh, we don't have ha, so it's it sounds like an a, eh, so it becomes an a. Eh. And you pronounce it, and you, and you pronounce like, I have, I have, as as it's right, because you, you, you listen it, you listen, you really listen like as an ad, eh, but it's not. It's an ah. Eh, okay. So and, and, and uh, um, in Spanish, that's they, they have less uh, of sounds than us, like in, uh, vowels. And you go like cai no posso, não posso. You ask a, 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 a person from Spain to say that, they go cai no posso, não posso. They actually they don't hear. Possible. They don't hear all. Oh. When they hear all, oh, they actually hear o. Oh. The brains they make modifications. So we, we we especially when it comes to vowels, it becomes very uh, uh, difficult for training our brains to to really listen to the differences. And when you have to learn languages like Swedish, Swedish. Uh, if I'm not wrong, there are 23 different vowel sounds. We have like in Portuguese, there are like nine. So um, it's almost impossible for us to hear the small differences like U, U that they have. So uh, there are physical things. We, we're not trained to physically do what they do. And there are cognitive reasons for accents. Okay. Thank you. It was My an pleasure. experience. Thank you, Anna. Uh, I that age factor always catches my attention because uh, I would think to myself, let's say that an eighty-year-old person really wants to learn a second language, I, I would think to myself, is it going to be almost a waste of time? But actually, one thing is accent pronunciation, and another thing is really uh, learning a second language. And we normally generalize, we, we connect pronunciation with uh, the whole process uh, of learning the second language, right? Uh, would anyone else like to, to participate? Guys, uh, the discussion is great. Uh, 
I wish we, we had more time, right? Uh, there are some topics, as Professor Teixeira said, uh, that we could spend hours and hours discussing. Uh, but we're gonna, we need to finish for today. So I, I would like to thank again everyone for participating. I want to thank Professor Gustavo Teixeira again for his presentation. Uh, the next webinar, guys, uh, will be announced soon. It will take place probably on July 21st at 1 p.m. Okay. Uh, the pre presentation will be entitled Attracting Top Talent in Your Organization. And it will be given by Professor Stephanie Thomason, who is an American professor working at the University of Tampa in the United States. Uh, it will be an opportunity for us also to interact with an English native speaker. Everyone is invited. Uh, the certificates for today's webinar will be sent soon via email. Okay. Uh, the signature list, I just sent it uh, on the chat. So please uh, double check if you, if you are writing your uh, full name right because it's going to be used for for the certificates. OK, guys, uh, thank you very much again and have a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much.